How's it going guys? I'm Connor and this is the Running Warehouse Test Run. We are back at it in San Luis Obispo, California. We are going to be putting four of the most popular road running shoes through the ultimate test to see just how well they perform and more importantly to help you pick the perfect running shoe for your own training needs. Let's take it to the roads to meet the testers and find out their shoe of choice. So there you have it. You met our testers and their shoe of choice. And now we are here at Port San Luis for our long run test. Now, regardless of your race day goals, the long run is always going to be an essential training component for any runner looking to build strength and endurance. We're going to go rack up some miles and see just how well each shoe performs from both a cushioning and comfort standpoint. Join along as we take on the long run. So we just finished up our long run test. And I think it goes without saying, this is probably one of the best spots in the area to get in the long miles. Now, all of our testers here today ran their long run a little bit differently based on their race and fitness goals. But my plan was to get in about 15 miles. Week after week, my long run can change up a little bit. Sometimes I go slower, more cruising efforts. And sometimes I go a little bit more steady, pick up the pace close to the end of the long run. That's exactly what I did today. And I feel like the Endorphin Speed 3 was the perfect pick. Now, I started off my run today about seven minute pace, definitely a more moderate effort. And I feel like the shoe was smooth and just effortless as I went through my stride. And then as the miles started to rack up, I got a little bit quicker, went 630 pace. Even those last couple miles got down to the six minute mile range. And the shoe just feels better the faster you go in the shoe. It really has that super shoe like feel. Of course, it has the Power Run PB foam inside the shoe that gives the really bouncy, ultra responsive ride. But the difference between a normal super shoe, it doesn't have that carbon plate, so you get a little bit more versatility and it doesn't quite have that race feel. It's more tuned for daily training. I really think if you're looking for a fast and efficient shoe that can handle pretty much any distance with that underfoot cushioning, I feel like the Endorphin Speed 3 is gonna be a great option. Like you, Connor, my long run paces will vary uh, from workout to workout. Today, I had 18 miles at a steady pace, eight and a half minutes per mile. When I have a workout like that, I need a shoe that's gonna be protective enough to keep my feet and my legs fresh and be energetic enough to kind of put me into cruise control so I can just not think about the run and just enjoy the scenery. The A6 Nova Blast 3 was a fantastic choice for that. For the most part, the Flight Foam Blast Plus just feels really nice, that soft step and feel. And once I was able to get into maybe five miles, I just really hit cruise control and the miles were just ticking on. In terms of 18 miles, I feel like maybe I push it a little bit. I did start to feel a little discomfort after about mile 16. So I may opt for something with a little bit more protection like the Super Blast in the future. But anything under 16, I think would be phenomenal for any runner really, experienced runners or newer runners. The midsole just feels fantastic and translates across all experience levels. 
All right, so I'm not quite up to John's distances right now. I'm typically running more for fun, stay in shape. I do like to do a couple half marathons during the year. And I do feel like the Clifton would be really great for that half marathon training and potentially race day as well. I felt like today I was doing uh, eight miles at an easy pace and it felt really great for that. I wasn't really thinking about the shoe. You know, it's got that initial step in comfort and that just continues throughout your run. Really, when you're racking up the miles, that's what you want. You don't want to shoot that you're thinking about and I had no irritation with the upper or underfoot and I feel like I you know this is even better with the Clifton 9 with the three millimeters added stack for those longer distances. I do think more stack the better when I'm getting up to marathon distance but you know a lot of people do use the Clifton for even that marathon distance as well. All right guys so I'm gonna finish off our long run test with the New Balance Rebel V3. The goal was to hit eight to 10, I ended up hitting eight, and I was actually really surprised. I wanted to hit 740, 745 pace, and I was actually closer to the 730 pace, and that all comes down to the fuel cell foam. It was really bouncy, highly energetic, and very natural through the gait cycle. So I ended up going faster than I wanted to, and early on in my training, as I get ready for a half marathon, I might not want to push that hard. I might want to go a little longer, have a little more cushioning underfoot like the more V4. But as I get stronger, as I hit those faster paces, a little more fit, I think the New Balance Rebel V3 is perfect. So overall, maybe not the best compared to some of the other shoes here, but for my long runs, I think the Rebel V3 was great. Next on up, we're putting the pedal to the metal at the track. Now, while long run day was all about building endurance, today is about going as fast as possible. This is Speed Workout Day. Right, speed day is in the books. I think it's fair to say we tested these shoes out at pretty much every pace from tempo speed to all out efforts. Caleb, we both ran pretty quick today, but I think you might have had the fastest split of the day. Well, you know, I said yesterday on the long run, the Rebel V3 is a good long run shoe, but today I'm a little more aggressive. This is the fastest shoe here. I did a traditional ladder starting with a mile and finishing at the 400. And I try to stay within 90 second splits, you know, stay consistent there. The shoe was excellent. The foam, again, shines through super responsive, but really it's the upper. I was locked in, and furthermore, with the wide platform, I really could push through the shoe. In other words, I wasn't fighting through the soft foam. So when it came to hitting that 90 second pace, everything felt really, really smooth. One of the reasons why I recommend this shoe to any mid-distance, long-distance track athlete. You can lace up, you can do your drills, you can hit the track, and then complete your runs off the track. So, speed day. Rebel V3 is my shoe for sure. Yeah, I'll agree. The Rebel V3 is a fast shoe, but I think the Endorphin Speed 3 is also right up there in terms of fastness on workout day. Recently, I've been using mostly carbon fiber plate shoes for my workouts for those efficiency benefits, but I feel like with the Endorphin Speed 3, you get that bouncy super shoe like feel in a slightly less aggressive package. Of course, since it doesn't have that carbon fiber plate in the shoe, it's not quite as firm, it's not quite as aggressive, and your legs are just gonna thank you the next day. You get all those efficiency benefits, but in a little bit more training-oriented package, started off the workout today a little bit more tempo effort, 540, 530 pace, and it feels really efficient, really fast. You get that bounce. It just, you lock in your pace and it feels good. Then the faster you go, again, I said this on long run day, it's hard to run slow in this shoe. You feel fast, you feel efficient. Sure, a super shoe might be a little bit quicker, but I think for a versatile workout day shoe that can really do everything, the Endorphin Speed 3 is a fantastic option. And speaking of a versatile shoe that could really do it all, I felt the same way about the Nova Blast 3. Today's workout was all about fine tuning my marathon effort, seven minutes a mile. I did two miles at marathon effort, one mile easy, two miles of marathon effort, and I finished it off with some strides. 
I thought the Nova Blast 3 did a fantastic job. That midsole foam just really feels nice and energetic. The shoe is overall ultra lightweight, something you really want in a speed day shoe. Not only was I able to settle into marathon pace nicely, but when I hit those strides and picked up the pace, my leg turnover was able to get going really nicely without a whole lot of extra effort. So overall, I felt really great with the Nova Blast 3. I think this would work for pretty much any runner, any experience. I know I said that for the long run day, but that just goes to show the versatility of this shoe, and I think anybody would enjoy it. So like the Nova Blast, I feel like the Clifton is that great all-around shoe, with the Nova Blast being a little bit more speed-oriented, but you know what, I enjoyed using the Clifton today, actually, on this speed workout. I was doing intervals at my 5K and mile pace and started out a little faster than I had planned, probably just because it's fun being out at the track and I'm not usually doing my workouts here. But the Clifton really is pretty lightweight considering all the cushion that it has for a daily trainer, around 7.7 .7 ounces. So I was appreciating that today. And also that added cushioning. I know it's gonna keep my legs feeling fresh the next day as well. So ultimately, if you are someone who prioritizes comfort and you want one shoe to do it all, I would definitely consider the Clifton. All right, we put in some big miles, we put in some fast miles, and now it's time to take it a little bit more chill and just get in those easy daily miles. Tag along as we cruise through recovery day. All right, easy day is complete, a nice and relaxing way to wrap up our test run. And while all of our shoes are suited for daily training, Risa, I feel like your shoe was the best choice after two harder days. Yeah, so out of our four options today, the Clifton would be my choice for that easy run, recovery run shoe. So today's really where the Clifton got to shine. And it felt awesome just from that initial step in throughout the run. It's got that cushion comfort that it's known for in the Clifton. Today, the shoe felt soft but not mushy, which I appreciate when we're doing those cruising efforts like this easy run. I could see why the shoe works well for so many different types of runners for walking as well. Overall, the Clifton is a shoe that's gonna make the miles fun, keep your feet happy. At the end of the day, that's what I want for most of my runs. Yeah, Risa, you talked a lot about soft and highly cushioned, and that's exactly what I was needing for today. After two hard workouts this week, my legs were feeling pretty beat up. So I needed some soft cushioning and the Fight Foam Blast Plus of the Nova Blast 3 really came through for me. It has a nice high stack, it's highly protective, and that nice soft step in comfort continued as we progressed the run. I'm happy to say that my legs feel better now than they did before the run, which is always the goal when you're in marathon training, you wanna stay fresh. And I wouldn't hesitate to grab this shoe on easy days, recovery days, or my daily miles. Yeah, you know, John, I am right there with you. With two harder days, a progressive long run, a speedier track workout, I really could use that recovery day. And I feel like the Endorphin Speed 3 did what it needed to do. It has a pretty good amount of stack height underfoot, so you get that protection, you get a little bit of that softness. It has the nylon plate in the shoe that surprisingly you don't really notice at some of these slower efforts. You get some of those efficiency benefits. I actually found myself picking up the pace a little bit and maybe that's not quite what you want on recovery day, but I feel like for some of those daily training efforts throughout the week, this shoe will do really well. I think personally, I might lean towards something like a Clifton or maybe my favorite shoe, the New Balance More V4 for a true recovery day. But overall, the Endorphin Speed 3 is a fantastic daily training option when you're looking for something a little speedy, a little bit more efficient, but still has that protection to go the miles. So Connor, we've been, Really comparing the Saucony Speed kind of more directly to the Rebel V3 over the last couple of days. More of a performance orientated daily trainer. But you know, I was really surprised with how it performed today. I had more than enough cushioning underfoot. That fuel cell foam is really bouncy and it really made the run fun. Would I say this is a recovery shoe? Probably not. For those re pure recovery days, I need a little more cushioning. But for those easy days, those shorter daily training runs, the Rebel V3 has a lot to offer. Now, I talked about being early on in my half marathon training. Honestly, I need a little bit more right now. It's a highly flexible shoe, puts a little bit of pressure on my arch, 
So right now, I do need a little more shoe for those easy mileage days, but as I get stronger, as I get closer to race day, as I get faster, I really want this shoe on foot for any run in the daily training realm. All right, that wraps up our Running Warehouse Road Test Run. It's pretty easy to see why these are four of the most popular training shoes currently on the market. While the Endorphin Speed and Rebel are a little speedier, and the Nova Blast and Clifton are built for that all-around comfort, each of these shoes has the versatility needed to handle all of your road running needs. If you're looking to test out any of these shoes for yourself, you can find them at runningwarehouse.com.